welcome back to my homestead. I just want to take a quick minute and show you a couple of very natural and very safe and effective fertilizers for your seedlings. Uh, even the when they're baby seedlings or when you're transplanting them into a larger pot. Uh, these, uh, this little fertilizer that I'm about to show you is great to use for um, tomatoes, peppers, uh, eggplant, that sort of thing. And it's readily available right in your kitchen. So when you eat a banana, don't throw away the peel. When you're peeling an onion, don't throw away the peel of the onion. So let me show you a couple of things you can do with them. So once you eat a banana peel, you can either throw it in a compost, which is gonna take a long time to break down, or you can make a fermented tea for your vegetables. And it's not good just for the seedlings. You can always feed uh, with this fermented tea. You can always feed your other plants um, because it's gonna provide a great source of um, magnesium, copper, and it's really gonna help with that um, flow of the nutrients and water between the vegetable cell, or the plant cell, I should say. So simple, simple, simple. I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut them into small chunks. The reason why I wanna cut them into small chunks because the more surface area is exposed, the faster this process will take place. So I always try to buy organic bananas because they're not sprayed with um, any kind of pesticide or anything like that. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly chop them into little chunks, just like this, nothing to it. And how many, it's really, there's no one or two or three. I think uh, this is from a whole little cluster that my kids ate. So probably, I don't know, a few bananas here. Let me just cut them all off here. I did not count how many bananas I have here. So as you guys know that it is also important not just to fertilize your um, plants, but also give them an opportunity to actually absorb the nutrients that we're feeding them through a fertilizer, right? Uh, we still want them to get into the cell. So banana fermented tea is gonna provide that opportunity, okay, for them to do that. So, all right, so I chopped them all up and I have some clean water here and I try to use the non-chlorinated water because chlorination usually um, it's not good for any kind of fermentation when you're fermenting vegetables to eat or uh, when you're trying to make, make a fermented tea for your fertilizer. So try to use a non-chlorinated water. If you have the opportunity to store, save some rainwater, that would be great. Or just um, take it re regular tap water and let it pour in a container and let it sit overnight sort of so that um, Chlorine will evaporate. All right, so I have a, a regular plastic container here that I filled up three quarters of the way. And now I'm just gonna cover everything. Oops, spraying too much. And now I'm just gonna cover everything with water. All right, cover everything with water. And I'm gonna let this sit on a, in my greenhouse where it's nice and warm, or you can do this in your kitchen or somewhere else, just put it aside and let this um, ferment for the next two, three days and the water is gonna change color. All right, so here also peels from your onion, right? And you guys know that onion is perfect to deter um, unwanted pesticides, pests I should say, pests in your garden. But also, did you know that the skins of onions are also a wonderful source of calcium, magnesium, iron, copper, but more importantly, potassium. So I have peels of three onions here, okay? And I also recycling some of the plastic yogurt containers here. And I'm just gonna... Fill this up with water, so not, not everything nicely covered. Okay, it's covered with water. And I also gonna put them on the side in my greenhouse that it can ferment for the next two, three days. And I'll show you what we're gonna do with that after. 
Okay. So three days later, three days later, my banana peels have released a lot of good nutrients into this water. It uh, definitely became that fermented tea. It got much thicker, almost a little sludgy. And now this water, it looks murky and dirty, but don't let this fool you. It's actually full of potassium, magnesium, calcium, iron, copper, but it also has a couple of other um, components. One of them is tenants, and tenants are good antiseptic, so it's going to help to fight any kind of like bacteria that might be in the soil uh, for the plants. And also it has this component it's called saponins. And these saponins are uh, very beneficial antifungal uh, protection for the plants. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the onion water aside for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to strain this. And honestly, I don't have a strainer. But if I did, a strainer prob probably would be a better way of doing this. And all I'm doing is I'm straining this, okay? Why? Because I don't need this, uh, these peels anymore. All I need is the water. So I'm trying to squeeze as much as I can out of it without actually losing it, okay? And this, uh, oops, something you dropped. But this will be way too strong to use on its own. I need to dilute it. And how I'm going to dilute it, I tried to do some research about it, you know, what is best way. And um, I found a couple of different things people say. But what I think I'm going to do and um, what I think is going to be the safest way is I'm going to uh, mix one to five. So one of this, um, one of this of murky water, of banana peel water to five uh, portions of clean water. Okay, and with that, I'm going to be watering my plants. All right, so something else I want to show you. So that's what's going to be watering my plants. But also, I want to show you the, the onion peel water. And remember my organic onions, I also let them sit and water. This was uh, two peels of onions in here, uh, and I kept everything: onion peels and the little, the little root uh, part of it. And it was sitting here, also fermenting and sort of releasing its uh, beneficial properties into this water to turn nice yellow color. Now, this is very good antioxidant, antibacterial. It has other, um, a lot of vitamins in here, especially vitamin B. Um, this is going to help, really, really going to help the plants with rooting. Because a lot of times when people are buying seedlings, they're really only looking at the plant, which is important. It's good to look at. But what's more important is the root system. How good are their roots? And to help them with roots, we need this solution. Uh, what else does onion peel water has? I know it has sulfur, obviously, uh, because it, it uh, makes your eyes water when you cut the onion, right? Uh, it has potassium, phosphorus, zinc, iron. Um, again, I'm going to be straining that because I no longer need the peels. All I need is I need just the liquid. Oops. Okay. And I don't need these anymore. Let me see if I can fish them out. Okay, so um, I might just put a little bit more water. So it's really one to five. Okay, so now with this, I'm going to be watering my seedlings. And this water, uh, this little fermented tea is really good to be used about once a week. So I want to show you something. Look at this plant. The soil is dry. So before I'm going to be using this fertilizer that I'm just going to make, uh, that I just made, first I need to wet the soil because the soil is dry. So I'm just going to first wet the plant a little bit. Okay. And only after that I'm going to be fertilizing. How much to fertilize this with? Probably a couple of tablespoons would be sufficient enough. Okay, a couple of tablespoons. So one, two, same thing here, one, two, okay? 
that's it. So don't throw away your peels. I know they're good to go in a compost pile, but don't throw them away. Use them to fertilize your seedlings. So friends, I just fertilized my vegetable seedlings with my homemade fermented tea that I used. Uh, banana peels and onion peels straight from the kitchen. Super easy, super available, right? And remember, not, nothing synthetic. So it's going to feed them with plenty of potassium and magnesium and other important minerals because those minerals are important for the plants, for the cellular structure. Oh yes, hi. Hi little baby. You came to say hi to mama. Yeah. Now last week when I transplanted all my seedlings from um, uh, from the little spot into uh, the larger pots, I used the Neptune uh, Harvest that was made out of seaweed, but this week I'm using my homemade one. So um, fertilization should be done about once a week, about every seven days or so, because just like a human body, we just you know we we require nutrients all the time. Same thing goes with plants, especially when they're sitting in pots. There's not much space for them, and they need to be fed, and not just with water, but they also need other nutrients. Okay, so um, so friends, I just want to show you, like, it's important. Oh, look, see the seeds, the uh, roots already coming out of the bottom. It's important when you're looking at the plant, not just the color of the plant and the shape of the plant, but it's also important to understand that for seedlings, what's important is is the root system, because the healthy root system is that's where all the energy is stored right now. Um, so, friends, I hope you are encouraged to look into natural gardening. Try organic gardening without adding any synthetic um, things into your soil, into your plants. So be encouraged and try something new. Bobby, such a good boy. Such a, oh, you're perfect. Such a good boy. Mama loves you. Yes. Yes. Yes, you're a good boy.